because the more we travel, the more discerning we become. We invite you to the Emirates Terminal at Dubai International Airport, where time is enjoyed, not merely passed. Fly Emirates to six continents. Let's take a look at some of the news in Europe. The momentum to the upside here in Asian trading. Capital Connection, the bridge between Asia and Europe. So that's a very positive picture here in Australia. We do have plenty of corporate news flow. Live from two continents. Very stock specific. Today's move. Fears of stagnation in the US but also in France. The Kospi is the standout winner today. I think we can expect another wonderful day. Capital Connection, keeping you ahead of the game. Weekdays at 1, only on CNBC. Markets look like this is red, oh, green across the boards right now. I'm used to saying red. All right, the ASX 200 high by seven tenths of one percent. The Nikkei 225 was in the red earlier on in the session. It has turned just a touch higher, just by ten points. The Hang Seng building on earlier gains. The Kospi and the Shanghai Composite also in the green. As for the price of oil, that is also trading a touch higher in Asian trading, up at $43.90 US a barrel. Prices jumped nearly seven percent overnight after OPEC indicated that it's pushing ahead with its sharp supply cuts. That despite increasing signs that the global downturn is crushing fuel demand. The market's now waiting for US crude inventory numbers due out tomorrow for another indication on exactly where demand is headed. Well, Jonathan Cornerfell is Asia Director at Hudson Capital Energy. He joins us now live from our studios in Singapore. Hi, Jonathan. Now, just as we were talking uh, about just uh, a little bit earlier in the break, mm -hmm. um, you've just mentioned that there was a, a significant change in the structure of, of the market yesterday. I mean, what, what's really the significance of this. Right. Well, uh, this morning when I talked to our traders in New York, the real buzz was about the way the, uh, the futures contango structure actually begin, began to start flattening out. We really saw the March crude oil uh, price, the front month crude oil, rally almost $3. At the same time, you saw December 2010 and you saw the back contracts in 2010 really start to come off. Uh, December 2010 WTI is now trading below $60. So the, the rallying in the front month and the, the, the uh, drop in the back month symbolizes a couple of different things. At first, it, uh, it looks like uh, the market may be putting in a, a temporary bottom right now. You may see a, a cushion in the market because uh, it's a little early to say that uh, inventories are being drawn down because I still expect to see a build in the inventory numbers tomorrow. But we may start be seeing now a, a topping off of the inventory numbers. And uh, at this point, traders are starting to see uh, $35, $40 as a, as a reasonable price to begin buying up these front month contracts. At the same time, when you're seeing the second half of 2010 markets start to come off, uh, what traders are also saying is that the economic turmoil and uh, the demand issues are still going to continue for quite some time. And maybe 65 maybe $70 crude oil for uh, the second half of 2010 is a little too expensive. So you can really draw a lot of conclusions from, uh, from uh, what we, the price action we saw yesterday. And the very first thing you would think is that maybe we're seeing a temporary bottom in the crude oil market. What about what does this mean then for inventories? I mean, we, we've got inventory numbers, of course, they're due out tomorrow. Most mm -hmm. are expecting uh, another increase. That would be the fourth in a row. But I mean, what does this change in the, in the market structure mean for inventories? Right. Well, you're still going to see inventory builds. There's still a uh, re refinery utilization in the United States is, is still dropping. And uh, what the impact that actually has in, uh, in Asia and in Singapore especially is that uh, fuel oil cargoes that maybe had been slated to come to Asia are now being sent to the U.S. just because there's less fuel oil being produced in the U.S. So that, in effect, is going to cause a tightening in uh, fuel oil inventories and a fuel, the fuel oil market in, uh, in Asia and Singapore. And we saw this Sing uh, 180 fuel oil market actually uh, have a bit of a rally yesterday. So really, energy markets really across the board uh, popped yesterday and while I don't see a, a, a sustained rally continuing what we're seeing now is the, the the market is consolidating and maybe starting to move a little bit towards the upside while it's going to take a long time for demand to, to return and you see that in the back month structure how the back month structure has come off uh, it looks like Jonathan that most of the OPEC producers are taking these uh, the cuts that they announced quite seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, still, they're looking for a 70 to 75 US dollar a, a barrel a range uh, in, in terms of the oil price. Isn't this still just a, a little bit of a reach? Right. Well, they're just trying to mark out the number where they really would like it to be right now. It's going to take a very long time. They basically have to shut the taps off right now to get crude oil to go up to $75 in the short term. So you, you've really seen the, uh, the Dubai contract, the Dubai crude oil rally, and you've seen a reflection of that in the Brent Dubai spread, where Dubai crude has traded over the North Sea benchmark and the WTI benchmark. It's just going to take five, six months, maybe even a little bit longer for those supply cuts to follow through and affect the, a West Texas contract and a North Sea contract. It just takes a little bit longer for it to flow through. Uh, 
Now, let me ask you then about what Iran's saying. Iran's actually asking for producers both inside and outside of OPEC to cooperate further to help bring this, uh, bring this price to the level that they'd like to see it. Mm. I mean, how realistic is this? Is this likely that we're going to see non-OPEC producers actually come in and cut supply? Well, a lot, first of all, from Iran's point of view, a lot of it, this is just a vocalization to try to talk the price higher. You really don't need to cut production in, say, Mexico because their production is already falling off a cliff. It has been for a couple of years. Russia itself is having problems. And a lot of the non-OPEC producers, their problems come down to a lack of investment in, uh, in, in the production facilities. So without them even cutting, they are cutting. So they're having trouble even replacing the oil that they're putting up right now. So you can really put that down to just... Um, trying to talk the market higher, and it's happening anyway. Talking about demand, uh, Jonathan, uh, quite a lot in the market are predicting that oil will never return to the peaks that we saw back in, in 2007. I mean, what's your view on that? Well, I think never, you know, that's a very difficult thing to, to call. But for the next couple of years, uh, a lot of the leverage, uh, and almost all of the leverage that it enabled um, investment in oil and uh, oil futures to get up to $150, that is gone. And it's not going to return for quite some time if it ever does. So. In the medium term, in the next three, four years, it would be very difficult to call $150, $200 oil just because the investor leverage is gone. Now, the price will increase, it's just not going to increase at a level uh, that everyone had been predicting. So, so it's going to take some time. It will get back up to $75, so OPEC can rest easy. It's just a matter of when. Are, are you long or short right now, Jonathan? Uh, we're long calls. So it, it's long very calls. difficult to oh, get right. into the market right now and buy swaps because you could be... Uh, getting out of them at $35, you know, $8 lower. So it's a difficult, difficult time. All right. It certainly is, I think, for everyone in the market. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Jonathan Cornerfell with me there, Asia Director at Hudson Capital Energy. That wraps it up for us in this edition of CNBC's Cash Flow. Thanks for watching. Fast Money is coming up next, so do stay with us for that.